Today on the Dream Big series, we have Sarah Mack. Sarah Mack is a writer and a mindset coach who supports creative entrepreneurs to transition to the passion work that makes them happy. She works with artists, coaches, and healers who are ready for more money, freedom, and fun in life and business. She does this through mindset coaching and intuitive business strategy. Originally from the UK, Sarah is now based in New York. She's also a song lyricist and performer. Sarah Mack discusses pushing past limitations, how to learn to trust your intuition. She talks about committing to a creative practice as well as doubling your income and healing from health issues. This is Chad Borkwin and this is the Dream Big Series. I am a professional musician and recording artist that has been fortunate enough to learn how to get paid doing what I love. But this didn't just happen for me. In fact, I have years of doing things other than music that have all played into part of the success I get to experience now. But more importantly, I've learned the value of having the right people speak into my life and how that is the key to breaking free of old limiting habits. So if you're tired of being stuck and you believe there is more for you in life, the good news is everything I've done is a result of what I've learned and it can be taught. Join us as we bring topics and guests onto this show to provide you with valuable insights on how to get to your big dream. This is the Dream Big Series. Welcome to the show. All right, welcome to the Dream Big Series podcast with Sarah Mack. She is a mindset expert and has so many things to talk about regarding mindset, which is a big deal when you're an artist. You know, that's in fact, it is the first chapter in our book, Play Music Make More, hits on the power of what it means to have the right mindset. So I am so excited to have you on this and really dive into this. We just kind of, in a book, we just kind of gloss over, you know, some basics, but yet I was on your website and you are, man, you go into the details of what it means to do that and you help people through this. Can you share a little bit, first of all, how did you even get into this work? Sure. Yeah, I'm so excited to be talking about this topic with you today um, because it's completely changed my life. And the way I got into it was um, I had a massive burnout. So I was working in film crews for eight years and it just, you know, I was like driving trucks, lifting furniture. It was fun. It was, a you know, a whole adventure in itself, but it just wasn't really creatively fulfilling for me. And um, my body just like ground to a halt and was like, no, this is not the direction that you're supposed to be going in. Um, there's something else for you, like shut down, shut down, abort, abort, abort. <laughs> so I pretty much ground to a halt. And it was in, you know, that time that I really had to turn inwards and just be start asking questions like what? Why is this, you know, why have I got to this point? What beliefs do I hold about myself? What's going on with my body? What's going on with my emotions? What's going on with, you know, my inner narrative that has, you know, was like pushing me in a direction that I didn't really want to go in or that wasn't really listening to, you know, like my true desires for my life. And, you know, I, I had, I was really ill. I had chronic fatigue for five years. I, you know, had severe depression. I can't tell which came first, but I think the cool thing about going through a depressive episode is my, my like understanding of it is it's the body's way of just shutting down and being like, no, you don't have the energy to do anything else until you sit down and you look inside and you listen and you, you know, sort out what's going on internally. So that's what I did. And, you know, I started working with a lot of coaches and that led me to mindset work. And once I started to really change my inner narrative and use you know, very strategically new thoughts and belief systems and, you know, new focuses. I started to get my energy back. I, you know, started to heal. I got, I completely recovered and my life went in a completely new direction, which was way more fulfilling, way more fun, earning way more money, having way more freedom and creative fulfillment, <clears throat> excuse me, than I'd ever experienced before. So that's why I'm really passionate about working with others on mindset because you know you can have amazing strategies you can be working really hard but if you don't if there's a part of your internal narrative that is holding you back you won't get where you want to go and you know conversely if you hunt down and you see where those limiting beliefs are 
for you and you shift them, suddenly it becomes really easy to take action. You, you know, suddenly take, find the strategies that get you from A to B so much faster and with so much more ease and enjoyment. And so I really do believe that having the right mindset is the key to getting whatever you want. Well, and you know, I've, I've been on your site, I've been all over it and you, there's a lot of things you can help people with. You know, you talked about the health issues on, for yourself, but how, you know, okay. So say I come to you and I, I've got this chronic, whatever, you know, and, and, I, and I, the doctors say, you know, you know, it might be this, we don't, or sometimes they say they don't even know. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and what, what's the, what's the steps that we would start working through to, you know, start fixing that. Yeah. So I really believe that when you have physical, you know, or emotional or mental health symptoms, it's the body in resistance and it's something that's out of alignment. And, um, the first step is to really start listening to yourself and like really start being honest with yourself. And that was really, you know, the, the path for me. And that's already what I work with all of my clients on is just, learning how to trust yourself because I think we're raised, you know, especially as artists, especially musicians, you know, anybody who has a passion for, you know, like a non-traditional career path, you've probably experienced a lot of discouragement throughout your life. A lot of, you know, don't do that because, you know, it's, there's no, you know, certainty that you'll be able to make a good income. Like it's a risk, you know, do something where you're, you know, there's more certainty that you'll be able to provide for yourself. So, you know, obviously as kids, we listen to our parents, we listen to our teachers and we absorb the thoughts and belief systems of the world around us because we just want to survive. And, you know, a lot of the time it's easier to disagree with everybody than it is to disagree. So, you know, throughout that process, really what we're doing is eroding our trust in ourselves and our own internal navigation system. And so it's a process to really start to give yourself the space to start listening to yourself before everybody else, because your desires are there for a reason. And, you know, if you have a desire to play music, if you have a desire to be a touring artist, if you have a desire to do something completely unconventional, then it's there for a reason. And I think, you know, we can all probably identify with how uncomfortable it is when you ignore that or when you deny it and you don't follow through on it. It just doesn't feel good. And it feels so amazing when you really give yourself permission to actually do the things that bring you joy and that feel right for you. So, you know, developing a, a habit to actually listen to yourself, whether that's through daily meditation, through daily journaling, sometimes just through creating some space and some creative thinking time when you go for a walk or, you know, obviously working with a mentor or a coach or just creating some type of space where you have the freedom to just see what's going on internally and to ask yourself, what are those repetitive thoughts and ideas that keep coming up for me? Because there's a value in that. And that's really, you know, what self-trust is, is trusting your intuition, trusting your inner guidance above what everyone else is telling you. And sometimes it can be something completely random that seems completely unrelated. Um, maybe to the path that you want to go down or the result that you want to create. But actually, you know, maybe it's a, an impulse to study a particular type of movement or fitness or be in a certain type of community or social group or, I don't know, creative hobby that isn't going to directly be the thing that, you know, creates the big goal or the big career change. But in giving us, in following our impulses and giving ourselves time to explore and pursue our, you know, our inner nudges, that it can create uh, a shift. And it can, you know, maybe be the creative activity that is the place where we get all of our cool ideas or we recharge ourselves or we connect with people that really influence us um, and expose us to new ideas or we connect with our body in a way that brings us so much more freedom in our thought. So, you know, it's not logical and it doesn't make sense in like the linear way that we've been taught to think about go take, take steps one, two, three, four, five, and then you get six. Um, and learning to trust your intuition, it really is that process of, you know, just trying something out. If you're excited by the idea, following that excitement, taking action and then being like, oh, that felt really good. And I gave that to myself and really, you know, celebrating that and then trusting the process and seeing how when you do follow those nudges, actually really amazing things can start to unfold for you. 
Well, you hit on such an important thing here. You know, we we talk a lot about in, in our Green Big series about the difference between a backup plan and a support plan, you know. Mm. And like we, we just interviewed uh, Dan Weller just a few weeks ago from Florida Georgia Line, and he, he used this term called corridor of opportunity, which is what I, I think you're talking about here, right? Where you where you just start moving in a direction that it seems like the next logical step towards your goal. In other words, it's your support plan. It's not a plan that you've got out of fear from of a backup plan. How how do you how do you lead people through that from you know once they start the process and realize okay i i know i need to move that direction and this this all makes sense what sarah's saying what do i do now yeah so and and i think it's really important to recognize that you know as a creative you are a trailblazer and what it is that you're about to create has never been created before and you know the mm. the career and the path that you're about to create has never been created before because everything is changing all the time right technology is changing you know access to resources is changing um all the time so you know to really tap into your creativity you get to innovate you get to create whatever career path is most accessible to you right now in this moment and trust as it unfolds and you know just really be open to possibilities that maybe you could never ever plan for so um you know, I think it's really important to have a vision and to trust, you know, what is that big vision? Like what is one kind of like outcome or end goal that feels really exciting to me that I know would make me really happy um, and, you know, fulfills my needs and desires and to really stay true to that vision and stay engaged with that vision and stay connected to that vision on a daily basis. But you don't have to plan all of the steps on the way there. Mm, all you need yeah. to focus on is one next action step. And if you wake up every day, connect to, your, connect to your vision and just ask yourself, what is one action step that I feel is moving me in that direction that I can take today? And that's all you do. And then once you've taken that action step, you then ask yourself, what is the next action step? Because you can't possibly plan step C from plan A, because after you take step uh, step B, like you could be a completely different person. You could have a completely different skill set and step C will look completely different from step B than it did from step A. So, you know, I think the ego and our fear really leads us to overcomplicate things and like want to plan everything in advance and have certainty and security. But actually, you know, really learning to trust yourself, really learning to just be in creative flow and trust that magical things can happen when you simply take one step forward and just keep doing that day after day. And that can build a lot of momentum and over time can completely change your life. Well, and, and I don't think we, I don't think we can ever factor in or visualize the people that that'll start to attract that actually help, help the whole process and even speed it up. Right. I mean, totally. how often have you seen that with your clients where they start down a process and then all of a sudden out of the, what seems like out of the blue, you know, yeah. the help shows up. Totally. And yeah, exactly. That's, you know, and I always try to remind myself and my clients of the 50% of life that's completely outside of your control. So, you know, a lot of the time when I'm working with clients, just simply by getting them to a place of inner clarity of acknowledging their desires and by giving themselves permission to realize it, even though they don't know how, yeah, suddenly opportunities will just wash up seemingly out of nowhere, like perfect opportunities that really answer, you know, exactly what they wanted. And, you know, obviously, because they've given themselves permission to own that desire and to really receive that opportunity, they're in a position to move forward and say yes. Whereas a lot of the time when we don't, we don't give ourselves permission, we either will brush past that opportunity or we'll deny it or we'll talk ourselves out of it, right? Right. The music industry is drastically changing and for the better. The power to have a successful music career is in your hands and no longer up to a few gatekeepers. The key is having the right information, the right tools, and committing to do the work. I want to help you jumpstart your career with my free ebook called Play Music, Make More. This free ebook is everything we've done with our own group as well as what I've learned being an entertainment agent, and it's all played into the success we've had as independent artists. Visit playmusicmakemore.com to get your free copy today.
Well, and on your website, you know, there's some bold statements on there and I love it. You know, it's like <laughs> double your income. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a bold statement. I mean, how many people come to you say, you know, Hey, I, I, I need my, my income doubled. Who doesn't want it? Right. And, and that's, that's why I'm so passionate about money mindset because mm -hmm. it literally is like, what are the, what is the story that you're telling yourself and what do you believe is possible and what are you available for? And, you know, as soon as I started shifting my internal beliefs, it just became a catalyst for me to, you know, be open to new inspiration for me to follow through on, on that inspiration and, you know, really be bold and, try out some completely different ways of doing things and that's led me to double my income every year and you know and, and I see that the same with my clients just when they give themselves permission to earn more money and they stay committed to that mindset and they embody that and they really step into you know being courageous taking action and allowing themselves to be open to opportunity and to follow through on opportunity you know their income just shoots through the roof as well and so you know, there's, there's a path of growing your income. Obviously, you know, we can grow our income in so many different ways. And sometimes it's more important to just have bring more money in because obviously we need it to pay our bills. We need it to take care of our life. We need it to create more creative freedom so that we, you know, we're not worrying about money. So we have the bandwidth to be more creative and follow those passion projects. Um, and so, you know, you get to you get to earn more money, and then you also get to address the how you're earning the money piece, um, and really build your mindset around being able to open up to bringing in money in the preferred ways that maybe you just never thought were possible because everyone was like, "You're going to be broke if you try and be a musician," or "You can never earn money as an artist," or you know, whatever these kind of like socially rampant limiting beliefs are about being able to earn great money as a creative, and you know, and then there's the one that addresses time as well, where you maybe think you have to work really hard to earn loads of money. And when you start to flip all of those beliefs, you're, it's like programming your mind, like, um, I call you know, like a GPS navigation system. And if you tell, if you train your mind that it's possible for earning money to be easy, that it's possible for you to double your income, that it's possible for you to earn money doing stuff that you love, that's really fulfilling, your mind will start to look for, you know, evidence of that. It will start to look for ideas. Mm -hmm. It will start to really alert you to opportunities to make that a reality. And then you take action and then it happens. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's a very powerful, yet yeah, actually pretty simple, you know, approach to be able to create change. It's just change the story that you're telling yourself and that you're focusing on on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, you, Maya, I, our daughter was a soccer player for a lot of high school and, she had a, a concussion at some point. We didn't even know what happened. But later on, we went to a chiropractor who did this specialized. It was, a, it was basically he reconnected the neural pathways through these eye exercises. Wow. But, but what we learned there was he's like once once you retrain these neural pathways once, you don't have to keep doing it. You mm. know, you know, in, in a matter of weeks, he right. took her from thirty to like seventy percent of where she was at just by retraining those. And I think what, I mean, that, that's what I'm hearing you're talking about. You're retraining the mind to think completely different. Right. Where you won't ever go back, you know, unless you right. choose to, right? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, I wish that you could just be like, I'm a millionaire <laughs> today. And then, you know, you didn't have to retrain it. But the truth is, you know, we, I think it's something like 70% of our thoughts are on repeat from the day before so you know our thoughts most of our thoughts don't even originally come from us right they come from our parents they come from our teachers they come from our friends they come from whoever we've been hanging out with you know for however many years we've been walking around on this earth so it is a little bit like you know steering a big ship in another direction like it's kind of or you know i i think of it as a train track like the train your train of thought like imagine a train on a train track it's gaining momentum it's going really really quickly you want to move it onto a different train track, but you've got to kind of like slow down <laughs> that momentum um, first. And, it, you know, and with repetition, it's really just repetition um, and really being very conscious and aware of your inner narratives and, you know, ha what kind of intention you're going into things with and and uh, really just consistently re-choosing the different track until that old thought process is kind of like wound down and 
the new one has got more momentum and but yeah once you get that momentum going and you really commit to that and that becomes a habit then yeah it does run by itself and you you suddenly notice that you're just not available for a lot of the you know the struggles and and the things that were just kind of normal for you before so in this work how important is who we surround ourselves with uh when you're doing this you know and this is hugely important because there there is a lot of artists out there that they are can potentially live in toxic environments yeah and if they want to make a shift then what do they do it's really important and yeah <laughs> you know especially with creativity especially when you're like you're birthing a dream and a desire that's just come from you I see it as like you know it's like a little sprout a little seed that you plant and as it begins to grow it's like it's very fragile like somebody can come along and stomp on it and it's gonna take you know you're gonna have to like regrow that seed so um you know, it's important to protect it. It's important to protect it by surrounding yourself and your project with people who are only going to contribute like nutrients and water and sunlight and support that seed to grow. So if you ever find yourself talking about a project or a hope or a dream or desire with somebody who, you know, down talks it or tells you that it's not possible or is skeptical about it or, you know, denies that you're capable of doing it, just like stop the conversation, withdraw, do not ever talk about it with that person again. And, you know, it just depends how fast you want to succeed, because if you want to succeed quickly, if you want it to be easy, if you want to, you know, have a lot of momentum and, and get, have the confidence of being able to see your dreams realized as quickly as possible, you know, make it as easy as possible. Surround yourself only with people who are going to contribute, only with people who are going to support you and celebrate you along the way and, you know, make it an easier and a more joyful experience. And, you know, it takes a lot of strength to separate yourself from relationships that don't support you. Um, because, you know, a lot of the time we're, we live, we're very habitual creatures. And if we've created relationships where our life and our habit is just to be in those relationships yeah it takes a lot of courage and it can be very uncomfortable to decide that you're going to let them go and often there's a big lonely space when you let some of your relationships go and it's okay to be uncomfortable with that and that's a process because as soon as you create space for something as soon as you let go of something or minimize something that's not contributing to where you want to go, you're really opening up that space for new, you know, more amazing things to come in that that will be more in alignment with where you're going. And that does happen. Um, but you know, it takes time, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but really, you know, it's all about the conviction that you have to bring your de desires to reality, know that it does take courage, know that, it, you know, it does require change. And sometimes that change can be very uncomfortable. And, you know, really requires you to take a stand for yourself because until you do that nobody will right so it's really about empowering yourself to trust in yourself to believe in yourself to be your your own number one champion who like fully is you know believing in and committed to your vision because until you get to that place and you can't enroll anybody else into that vision right mm -hmm. but as soon as you get to that place then your energy becomes very magnetic and suddenly opportunities are washing up on your doorstep suddenly everybody wants to help and support you and that's where you know the fun really gets going yeah for sure one one question that we absolutely love to ask or i love to ask is you know what advice would you give to 16 year old sarah to knowing what you know today mm, i would that's a really great question i would probably say don't listen to anybody else <laughs> and just do what you want. Do what feels good. And um, yeah, pretty much that. Just listen, you know, listen to yourself, listen to your desires, do what's fun, do what's exciting to you. And don't listen to anyone else unless they support you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So how do people, you know, what are all the ways that people could connect with you? So I'm on many different social media channels. You can set, check out my website with sarahmack.com. Same on Instagram, same on YouTube. And I also have a Facebook community that's free to join where I share trainings and inspiration. It's called uh, Big Creative Fun. So you can come and join, uh, join in the fun over there as well if you feel like it.
Yeah, fantastic. And, you know, we will have all of that in the show notes as well so that people can get there easily. And this is going to be available on YouTube as well as all the podcast platforms. So be a lot of ways that uh, people can affect their own mindset just by connecting with you and learning from you. So last question. Okay. And, and thank you so much for being on. What, how do you describe or how do you define your inner rock star? How do I define my inner rock star? Yeah. That's a good one. Um, you know what? That is a really good one because I do that a lot for my clients. <laughs> And I don't, I don't know if I have what's one of the coaches that I work with called Liz Kimball. She's an amazing creative coach as well. Um, she calls it your creative, um, creative warrior goddess queen or something like that. Your inner creative warrior goddess queen, you know, and it's just, yeah. Tapping into, you know what? I, I think I call it my intuition. It's like that that little voice inside of me that's just really creative, that loves to have fun and always has a really good idea and, you know, is always right. That's kind of, who, yeah, that's how I connect to that. Fantastic. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. It was so fun to be here. All right. That is Sarah Mack with the Dream Big Series. I really enjoyed this interview with Sarah Mack. I love it when she talked about being a creative trailblazer. Not what everyone else is doing, but what is the path for me that has never been done before? We ask that you please support Sarah Mack at all the links in the show notes, and we thank you again for listening to the Dream Big series. You've been listening to the Dream Big series. We would love to hear from you, so please leave us a comment on your favorite podcast platform. Don't forget to visit us at DreamBigSeries.com for more podcasts, videos, and blogs. Also, let us know if you would like to bring the Dream Big Series event to your school, corporation, or organization. Thank you for listening to the Dream Big Series.